it, will January 6th be buried like the JFK assassination? We heard this story this week from a Secret Service agent who says that there was more than one shooter in Dealey Plaza. He found another bullet. And, uh, you know, that would uh, clearly suggest that there was more than one shooter. Um, because it would mean that the magic bullet couldn't have gone through both Jack and John Connolly if it ended up on the seat beside Jack. But, you know, I, I don't want to make this about the Kennedy assassination uh, as much as some people over on Daily Kos want to. I, I really want to, you know, use that as kind of a metaphor for what's happening with January 6th. Uh, January 6th is, uh, you know, large par parts of it have already fallen down the memory hole. I mean, aren't you curious who planted the pipe bombs? We still know nothing about this. Uh, I'm curious who disabled Mike Pence's key card. Why was it that Pence didn't have, you know, didn't have a functioning key card that could get him around and through security and stuff? Who removed the panic buttons in Ayanna Presley's office? Who shared the location of the non-reinforced Capitol windows? Inquiring minds want to know. And now we, we have this amazing story that was published in The Atlantic yesterday. Uh, it's, a, it's, well, it's actually a chapter from a new biography of Mitt Romney by McKay Coppins. And uh, fascinating, by the way. I recommend reading the whole thing at, uh, over at theatlantic.com. Um, because it's, it's, it, it's a fascinating insight into Mitt Romney, but perhaps more importantly into the entire United States Senate. But this one uh, paragraph really jumped out at me. This is, this is from the book. Uh, law enforcement had been tracking online chatter among right-wing extremists who appear to be planning something bad on the day of Donald Trump's upcoming rally in Washington, D.C. The president had been telling them the election was stolen. Now they're coming to steal it back. There's talk of gun smuggling, of bombs and arson, of targeting the traitors in Congress who are responsible for this travesty. Romney's name has been popping up in some frightening corners of the internet, which is why Senator Angus King needed to talk to him. He isn't sure Romney will be safe. So Romney takes this phone call from Senator Angus King, the senator from Maine, and King tells him that he just heard from a guy in the Pentagon. Now this is on January 2nd. This is four days before January 6th. And Angus King tells him that a guy in the Pentagon just told him, well, I'll, this, is, this is the text message that Mitt Romney then, after this conversation with Angus King, sent to Mitch McConnell. Uh, Dear Mitch, in case you have not heard this, I just got a call from Angus King, who said that he had spoken with a senior official at the Pentagon who reports that they're seeing very disturbing social media traffic regarding the protests planned on the 6th. The, there are calls to burn down your home, Mitch, to smuggle guns into D.C. and to storm the Capitol. I hope the sufficient security plans are in place, but I'm concerned that the instigator, the president, is the one who commands the reinforcements the D.C. and Capitol Police might require. Romney was absolutely right. Donald Trump did control, uh, you know, the executive branch, and out of the executive branch, you've got the Pentagon, and over at the Pentagon, and control of the National Guard of all the states, and over at the Pentagon, you had Chris Miller, the acting Secretary of Defense. And this was on January 2nd. Two days later, on January 4th, Chris Miller writes a memo to the D.C. National Guard saying, you may not issue to your people weapons, ammunition, bayonets, batons, or ballistic protection equipment, helmets, or body armor. You may not physically interact with Trump's protesters. You may not employ any riot control agents. You may not share equipment with law enforcement agencies. You are not authorized to use uh, ISR, you know, uh, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance assets to, uh, to assist the Capitol Police. You are not allowed to employ helicopters. You are not to conduct searches, seizures, arrests, or other similar direct law enforcement activity. And you are not authorized to seek support from any non-DC National Guard units. Now, they knew full well in advance what was coming. I mean, the Pentagon had warned Angus King. They knew what was going on. Chris Ray was running this, the, the FBI. Uh, Donald Trump had put him in charge of the FBI. He's still in charge of the FBI. Chris Ray had to have known what was, gonna, what was going on, and yet he provided no assistance to the Capitol Police. Nobody provided any assistance to the Capitol Police. So why afterward, so why, number one, why did Chris Miller do this? Number two, why did the Secret Service and Department of Defense wipe their phones? 
so the data could never be retrieved. Why has there never been a public examination of any of this? What did Christopher Ray know and when did he know it? I mean, this is like a small town police force gets word that a gang of bank robbers are coming to their town on Saturday. And so on Friday night, they, they take all the phones off the hook and go fishing for the weekend. When they come back on Monday, the bank's been robbed and they go, oh gee, I didn't realize they really intended to rob the bank. And then they burn the memo that told them the bank robbers were coming. I mean, why are so few people openly speculating that corrupt individuals within the FBI, the Secret Service, or the DOD might have participated with Donald Trump in a plot to overthrow our government? And how many of Trump's stooges are still in our government, perhaps waiting for his return? Is that what Tommy Tuberville is doing by holding up military promotions? That he's trying to hold open seats in the military that Donald Trump can fill when he comes back into office, or if he comes back into office. God forbid, right? I mean, it just, it just goes on and on. You had the, the meeting with Charles Flynn where they, they debated whether or not to send the National Guard and decided not to send the National Guard to help the Capitol Police as they were watching on television the Capitol being overrun by Trump's, Trump's uh, seditionists, his traitors. The, the, the Capitol Police uh, had some inkling that this might be coming, and so they had all their, their uh, riot gear stored in a bus just, you know, in the basement of the Capitol, and then they discovered that the bus was locked and they couldn't get in, they couldn't get into the bus to get the riot gear. Who locked the bus? Who took away Ayanna Presley's uh, panic buttons? Why has there been no follow-up to Lauren Boebert live tweeting Nancy Pelosi's uh, location as she was being hunted for assassination? Why haven't we heard about the members of Congress who were giving, you know, uh, tours to insurrectionists? Why has there been no investigation whatsoever into complicity at the higher levels of our government? I, it, this, just this whole thing. I mean, you know, it's been 60 years since Kennedy was murdered this year. This November, it'll be 60 years. And we still don't know the whole story. We can't afford to wait 60 more years to find out what happened on January 6th. You know, I, I think that we need to, we need some serious inquiries here that don't cover up for these people. So anyhow, <laughs> my rant. Uh, we'll continue as the planet outside the safe operating space for humanity. And uh, what Sarah Huckabee Sand? I mean, corruption, what is thy name? I'll, I'll tell you about that on the other side of this break. Stay with us. <laughs> 